All right, today we're gonna build a computer. We're gonna use a Carbide Series Spec 2 case with a plastic window on the side. The case is made out of a thin metal, pretty sturdy though, one of the more sturdier ones that I've used uh, for the price. The price is uh, under $50 on Amazon. Really good case, sturdy, durable. The front is made out of plastic, good air ventilation on the front, power button and reset button on the top. You get two USB 3.0 ports on the top and you have a um, headphone and microphone jack in the top. On the back, you have all your usual uh, ports here for all your cards. Power supply is going to go on the bottom. This is where all your ports are going to be off your motherboard. Here, if you're going to do a water cooling system, you can do a water cooling system with this. The inside of the case is pretty simple. Now again, this is a cheap case. This is not very expensive at all. Um, Corsair did actually pretty good with uh, with the case for the price they wanted for it. <coughs> on the inside of the case, as you see, it was really easy to remove a couple screws in the back. On the inside of the case, you got room for two CD-ROMs here. You got room for four hard drives down here. You have a front-mounted fan. You have a rear-mounted fan. Here in the bottom, you have uh, ventilation on the bottom for the fan on the bottom of your power supply. You have ventilation on the top if you want to add more fans to the top. You can add another fan to the front here, and here's where your motherboard's going to mount, and these are the, these are the plugs that it's going to uh, plug into your motherboard for your front panel. That's good. Alright, so now you know what the case is, now we're going to show you what's going to go in this case. We have an Intel i7 core processor, uh, the 4790K, it is a 4 core processor, uh, 8 meg cache. We have a Samsung SSD 850 500GB uh, SSD hard drive. We have 16 gigs, two 8 gig sticks of some of the Ripjaw from G-Skill. Pretty good memory, I like it, I've used it for a while, pretty stable, I haven't had no issues. We have um, an inexpensive power supply, it works really well, I've had no problems with it. This cost, um, I think it was like 55 or 56 bucks, maybe less, on Amazon. It's a Sentley, um, X Plus power supply, 725 watts. It's powered everything I've ever put in the computer so far, and it hasn't uh, given out on me. We have, for sound, we're going to put in a Sound Blaster Auto GFX. Really good sound card from Creative for the price. It's a budget sound card. Really just used to take the pressure off of your RAM, so that way you have more access to more RAM. Here we have just a regular A3 DVD burner, nothing special. Um, it's a SATA port. Simple. I think it was like 20 bucks off Amazon. No big deal. Here we have a GeForce uh, GTX 750, not a gaming card, but just something more to add a little bit more to the computer so it's not slow when you're doing videos or if you're doing some minor gaming. Decent card for the price, 100, I think I paid 130 bucks for it. Decent card. Here we have the Fatality AS Rock Z97 Killer Series. Um, good gaming board, sturdy, got a lot of weight to it, really good components. I've read a lot of people's reviews, nobody's had major problems with them. The computers I've built with them have worked really well. I recommend this board for your, uh, if you're going to be building uh, regular Intel, uh, uh, if you're building an Intel uh, system. And uh, after this, we'll go into how the components are put in the computer. Alrighty, we're getting ready to put the motherboard in now. I wear a headlamp so I can see down inside of my case better because some of the things that you're putting in there are kind of hard to see and without proper light. You know, if you have light above you, your head gets in the way, it blocks the light, you can't see where you're going. So we're going to start off with this motherboard. Inside of the motherboard, you have your manuals. Don't lose your manuals. You're going to need them to know what your wiring setup is. This is going to be the drivers for the motherboard. You're going to need those. This goes on the back panel. Real simple installation. We're going to... Um, we're going to show you first how to put this in, and then we're going to move on to actually putting the board in itself. Alright, so now I'm putting the back panel in. One thing you always want to remember is that the keyboard, sometimes there's a keyboard and mouse, but this one's just keyboard and mouse input single instead of double, always goes at the top of the board. Take it in, you put it in from the back, and you gently Press them into place, there's little uh, clips that lock it into place when you push it in. You can hear it snap into place. Once, all of, once it's all snapped into place, all the way around, you're done with that step, you're ready to install your motherboard. 
All right, now inside of these cases, every case I've ever bought, I don't know if there's exceptions, there's always a little box that comes with these. Inside of these little boxes, there's gonna be all of your screws, all the screws you should need for the whole computer. You have little ties to help keep the wires out of your way. You have all these little screws for all these billions of different little things for these computers. I know, I explain really well, what can I say? So one set of these screws that you have, you have fan screws, you have long fan screws, you have, dri you have drive screws that I can't hold on to, you have motherboard screws, and you have base screws. So we're going to go ahead and install the motherboard. Now the other parts that come on this motherboard is you have your SATA cables. Very important, don't lose them, you need them for your drives. Now, this is a static protection bag. Always make sure you touch metal before you actually handle the actual unit. The metal will discharge any electricity from your body. You don't want to have a static charge in your motherboard. It will kill the motherboard. Oh, goody. They have uh, little zip ties closing this one in, so I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. I got the little plastic things off. Um, on your motherboard, here's where your memory is going to go. I see that all right. Yeah. This is where the power supply is going to plug in. This is your, um, you're going to see a big plug about this wide. It's going to go here. This is your USB 3.0 port. These are your SATA ports here for your hard drives. You have a fan connector here. Here you have two um, PCI slots. Your USB ports here, communications port here. Those are for your video cards, your PCIe video cards, your PCIe card if you have a slot card for like sound or um, some network cards use it and USB 3.0 extra cards use it. You have two of them here. Up here you have more chassis fan connectors here. This is where your processor is going to go. You have, um, it takes two power plugs for this. So you have a second power plug here, it's an eight, uh, eight port plug. You have your CPU fans one and two here. You're really probably only going to use CPU fan one. And you have a power fan here, which you're probably not going to use unless you have a special, uh, special unit for that. And on the back here, as you can see, this is for mouse and keyboard, old style, PS2 style. Your DVI, your regular VGA, your HDMI port. These are USB 3.0s. These are USB 2. This is your LAN. And this is your sound port. Now we're going to put the motherboard into the computer, the case. Please be very gentle with it. These things are mostly fragile. Okay, and inside here you have mounting points. You have, there should be six mounting points. You should have two at the top, two in the middle, two on the bottom. All of your mounting points are going to match up with little holes in the motherboard. So you're gonna slide the motherboard, you're gonna line it up with the back panel that we installed a little while ago. Once you have all that lined up and in place, it should just fit right in. You should hear a little, like a little click. It'll click right into place. Now I'm going to get my tools and I'm going to start the mounting of the motherboard. All right, now we're going to put the screws in on the board. Now on this specific board, instead of being six, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screw points. So this is a little different than most standard motherboards. Be very careful on the very top because it's a weird angle because of this piece trying to get in there. 
Be careful that you do not cross thread the screw. I have done it a few times in my life. Mounting is very important. You need to make sure you have all of the mount points screwed in. Don't over tighten them though, but make sure that they're snug. You don't want to strip anything out or do anything bad to the board. Anybody's eating, it's right behind me. Sorry. Now, I am using a magnetic screwdriver. Some people will argue not to use magnetic screwdrivers. But in my life of doing this for oh, uh, 20 years, I've not had a problem with magnetic screwdrivers. They've all worked pretty well for me. Now, I'm not saying go drag your magnetic screwdriver across your motherboard. That would probably be a really bad idea. Okay, got all the screws mounted. Now, the next thing I want to do... I want to start plugging in these wires. Now... I don't know if you can zoom in on this, but these wires, they all have different things on them. You have your power switch, your reset switch, your power LED, and your hard drive LED. They're going to go, and see now that's where I have to get the book, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to go right here by the looks of it. And they're marked, but it's a lot easier if you get the book and you look in the book to make sure exactly which one goes where because these things are really tiny letters to read what it is. So I'm going to go find my book. Okay. That's the software setup guide. We don't need that right now. Quick installation guide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip through the book. Okay, now inside of the book, I found out where the system, system panel header is, and it's going to tell me exactly where to plug in each and every one of the wires. And I'm going to go by that instead of going by that because it's a lot easier to see in the book. It is him in there. Yeah, something man. Did you pause it? Yeah, hold on. No, I didn't. Oh, no, we have that. You're good. Okay. Now you want to make sure that you're getting the plus and the minus on some of these right because some of them will be marked with a plus and a minus and you want to make sure that those are on the right ones. Now the way it usually works is your power switch and your power LED are going to be on the top. The power LED is usually on the left side and the power switch usually plugs in on the right side, four pins. And then right below that on most of them, the HD LED is going to be right, be right below the power LED. And then the reset switch is going to be the two prongs right below 
the power switch. Pretty simple, just sometimes it's a little pain in the butt to get them to plug in right. Other than that, uh, there you go. Those are plugged in and ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is, since I'm still standing here doing this, I am going to mount the processor. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, now we're going to put the processor in. This is the CPU fan. Your uh, thermal paste is here. Sometimes we'll take the thermal paste off and uh, replace it with different thermal paste, but we're going to go ahead and go with the stock thermal paste on this. And this is the CPU that we will be using. This is the Intel i7. So we're going to move a little lever here on the side and pull it back. It's going to release it. We're going to take the little plastic cover off, completely 100% unnecessary now. Matter of fact, it would be in the way and it would ruin the machine if you left it in there. All right. Now on this CPU, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there's a little triangle on one of the corners. Where's your hand? Okay, there it is. Right here. Okay, on the motherboard, you're on, the, on the little mounting point for the processor, you're going to look for a triangle. I doubt you're going to see it with the camera, but if you're down there looking at it, you will find it. And that's going to go just like that. Now once you've got it in place, you're going to bring the door back down on top of it. You're going to lock it in place with little handle and she looks like she's good after I've done that we're going to take the heat sink and the fan now this is gonna go right on top of the processor These little pins on an Intel, the way Intel does it, instead of having a little lock lever, these little pins are going to go in the little holes around the mounting point for the processor. And you're just going to snap them right into place and give them a little turn. These are all locked in. They're not going anywhere. After you do that, you're going to look for the top of the board. It's going to say CPU fan. If you have multiple ones, you'll see CPU fan 2 and CPU fan 1. You want CPU fan 1 because this is a four prong. You're going to slide it right on top of the prongs. It can only go on one way. There you go. The heat sink is now plugged in and ready to go. Now I'm going to move on to putting the rest of the panel connectors together before I put the power supply in, just so I have, I know where my wires are going, I know where everything's gonna be, so I know how to move the power cords around where they need to go. Now on the front of this board, all the way to the right side, is where you're going to put your USB 3.0 cable. It's gonna plug in, real simple, can only go in one way, done. Now you have your HD audio, which I'm not going to plug in because I'm putting a sound card in this machine. So I will be putting this one off to the side and out of my way. And now I'll come back in a few minutes and I will prepare for the installation of the power supply. See you shortly. Might as well be booed. All right, so now we're moving on to the power supply. Here's what the power supply looks like. This is the part that you want to point out the vents for the power supply, which are on the bottom on this specific model. Here's the screws you're going to use to mount, to screw it into the back area. Here is your huge rat's nest of wires that go five million directions and hard, as, hard, hard to control and put where you want, but you know, you can get them there. I was talking earlier about the big part, the big power plug on the motherboard. That's gonna be this one, it's gonna be in two parts on this power supply. So you're gonna plug them in just like this um, the clip is going to go over, you'll see a little clip area on the board itself. On the other part, I was showing you that there was a four prong or an eight prong one on the top part of the motherboard. 
And that's where these two guys are going to go in there. They can be a little fun to plug in, but you know, that's what you need to power the board. It requires all of it to power. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this bad boy in the bottom of the case. There we go. Now we're going to move to the back of the case and I'm going to show you how to screw this in. Real simple, probably don't need me to show you, but I'll show you anyways. Try to make this right with the floor. Okay. Got it. Okay. So here on the back of the case, you're going to see little holes to screw the, the power supply into the case. The thing is, this can go either way, so there's multiple screw holes, screw points, on the back of the case itself. But I always recommend make sure you have the fan facing towards the outside vent. You don't want to blow the heat up towards the processor. You want to keep as much heat away from your processor as possible. It's very important. It's like absolutely important. I agree. <laughs> 100%. I don't think you want to overheat your, oh, no. your uh, processor. We don't need a fan if you ain't going to point it in. Now another thing you can do if you want to test the quality of a power supply, something I've lived by and I've heard a lot of other people say the same thing. Um, there's different qualities for power supplies. Not all 850 watt or 725 watt power supplies are created equally. Um, if you've got a really light power supply, it's not going to be any good. It's going to wear out quickly. The components are just really, uh, really low grade components. Get a nice hefty one. It's got really good components in it. It's going to last you a lot longer and it's going to put a better, cleaner power output out for you. So I really recommend that you look for one with a little bit more weight. It doesn't have to be real heavy, just you don't want it to be ultra light. It's, then it's just useless to you. Now I'm going to move on to plugging the power plugs into the motherboard itself. All right, so I have the large one with the two plugs. I'm gonna take them and pop them right into the motherboard here on the tip top. There you go. Now, if you look, there's little arrows here. It's gonna tell you that the two arrows go together like this. Now, honestly, you can't turn it any way you want. It won't plug in. These little things are shaped all different little shapes, so they only fit in one way, but it does make it easier. It's not trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole. So, there's the front one done. Now I'm going to move on and look for the top one, which is in my hand. And that's the four I was talking to, the two, uh, the two fours. I'm going to take them right here to the very top, if you want to move the camera so they can see the top. At the very tip top up here, you'll see the eight, port, the eight plug spot. You're just going to take both of those together. And not the easiest thing in the world to do. But once you get them in, boom, they're done, they're snapped in, they're ready to go. Blind, blind. Sorry. And then now I'm going to start the cleanup process for the cords and I will get back to you with the next step on this. Okay, we're going to start installing um, the other hardware now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my CD-ROM in. That's going to be up at the top. On the inside of here, you're going to fill a couple of clips and you're going to do basically what I just did. You're going to push these little clips pull them in and just push this little panel right out of the front. When you're done, you're going to have a hole in the top of your case just like that. And then we're going to take the CD-ROM. You don't need any screws or anything for uh, doing this part of everything. Take your CD-ROM, you're going to slide it right in the front just like this. It's going to snap right in. These little guys right here are going to snap in. It doesn't move. It snaps it right into place, no screws necessary. The next step is, now I don't have a regular hard drive to install for you, but they go in here. They slide right in, snaps into place with little thing, little doohickeys right here. What I do have is this nice little SSD. And there's a nice little SSD holder right here on the very top. You're just going to slide it right in there. Not always the easiest thing in the world. And it snaps right into place. Doesn't go anywhere. There you go, your hard drive, your SSD is now installed. 
Um, when I'm done with all of this, I'll be cleaning all these wires up because we want to make sure we have maximum airflow through the case. We don't want these wires to be all bundled up like this and all in the way of the air trying to get through. And that, and it's kind of ugly looking like that. So we want to find a way to make that look prettier. Next thing I'm going to install, I'm going to install this here sound card. Again, like anything with a board on it, they're going to come with static bags. What I do is I take it and I figure out where I'm going to put it, right here. And I, so I know it's going to use the top port up here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to remove a little screw, hopefully since they wanted to make it as tight as they could. So, grab a screwdriver. I'll make sure we have the right one again. Or I can throw it around, it's no big deal. Okay, so it is the very top one. There we go. I'm going to pull the little cover out of there so it's out of my way. I'll take this guy. Now this is a PCIe for the sound card. It goes in the tiny little slot at the very top of this of the ports on this board. And it snaps right into place. Once I have it in place, I'll put the screw back in up here so I can hold it into place. Uh, and they didn't really make it the easiest thing to put the screws in that on this one. And there we go, we've got that locked into place, it won't accidentally fall out. Now that we've got that one done, you don't have to do it all in this order, I am just doing it in the order that I'm grabbing the parts. Now I'm going to install the memory. Now there's a little pin slot on the memory, and up in here, you can see where the pin slots are, little tiny little slots. Now you don't want to just put one, two, like that. Um, you want to, if, if you're only doing two sticks of memory, you want to put it on channel one. Push it until it snaps into place. You're not going to break it, but don't push too hard. You don't want to, you know, force something in and then snap it. And if, you're, like I said, if you're only doing two, you don't want to put them all on the same channel. One, two, three, four. You want to put it on channel one and channel three. Memory is now installed. Everything snapped into place properly. Now my next step is the video card. Now in this case, like I said, we're not using a gaming card. We're just going to use a little 750 Ti. Nothing special. Just to help take some pressure off of uh, off the system to make the system run a little faster. You're not going to be really playing any games or anything like that. But here's the little tiny 750. Uh, really small card. Um, he's like the baby brother. That's the same thing. I want this in the top one. So I want to measure. This one's going to take two ports. So we're going to take these two out. You 
can see back there in the back, I'm pulling off the little covers. I'm going to take the little video card. And we're going to gently put it in and snap it into place. And then there you go. Make sure it snaps into place. There's a little clip on the back of the port that you're snapping it into. It'll snap onto the back of the card and it'll hold the card in place so the card doesn't move around. Now that I've got that in, I'm put these back into place. Cameraman's been insane for a very long time. It's okay. We still love it. And there you go. There's your sound card. There's your video card. And there's me getting stuck on things. It's kind of cool though, the reflection off of it. It looked really good in here. So, the way this board works, this is a 16X port. This is an 8X port. You want your card to be in the 16X port. The 8X port is if you want to add a second card. Some cards have the ability to... Um, with GeForce, it's called Sly. With AMD or with ATI, it's um, Crossfire. And there'll be a little port on the side that you can plug a wire into and connect the cards together to make them work simultaneously together, and you have more power. This card does not support that. All right. So now that we've got the cards into place, we are now going to put the drives up. Now, these are your SATA cables for information. This is what you're going to use to plug the board into each drive. Actually, before I do that, let's find a way to get these wires to look a little bit prettier. Okay, so I'm going to not be needing this wire at all. Now these are your PCI power cords, or your, I'm sorry, your SATA power cords. And these are your old style Molex, which is not used very much, but you can get the adapters for case fans, so you can plug them into this, because usually there's not enough plugs on a motherboard to plug in more than two fans. So they're still good to have. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the SATA power for this long one with all the extras on it. I want to run this one up to the CD-ROM at the top. Now inside of here, there's a little, I don't know if you can see it real well, there's a little notch in it right there that goes up and down. On the back of whatever you're plugging into is going to have that same notch. So that way you can match it up and it plugs right into place. Now since I put that one up there, I can take these excess wires and I want to put these up here and completely out of my way, out of sight, out of mind. They don't block any airflow. There's nothing up there for it to get in the way of. There, beautiful airflow there. Now this one here has three. Um, I'm only going to be using one. I'm going to put it right here. Same thing, little notch on it. Make sure you get it the right way. Put it right on the back of this SATA drive. And these little guys, I'm just going to put them right down there just like that. They're out of the way. They're not bothering anything. Real simple. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook the drives up to the motherboard what I want to do is I want to find out where the first SATA is for this one I'm gonna actually get the book out because I can't see the numbers okay so
All right, so by the look of the book, say the one, two, zero, one, two, three, um, five, and then four. These two are backwards according to the book. I'm gonna put one here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the hard drive on say to zero. I'm gonna go all the way to the end down here, and I'm gonna put the CD-ROM down here. That way, if later on he wants, he can utilize the other channels for more hard drives. So I'll go ahead and I'll take the first one. I'm going to plug it right into SATA 0. After I've got it plugged into SATA 0, I'm going to bring it right down here through the wires. Plug it right into the back of this hard drive. There we go. Wires are still pretty much out of the way. No big deal. Now I will take the other SATA cable that I have. Like I said earlier, I want to put this all the way in the last channel down here. So I'll put it all the way down here. I always like putting my CD-ROMs in the very last channel. It doesn't matter if you do or don't. It's just something that I like doing. I'm going to plug it right in the back of the CD-ROM here. Now when I get all this done, I'm going to take a lot of these wires like this and I'm just going to tie them to the back of the case right over here like this. And they're just all going to be out of the way, plenty of airflow coming through the case. Let's see, do we need anything else done to her? Okay, now, don't forget this guy. This is the front mounted fan. Now I'm going to look on the motherboard for the case fan plug, chassis fan, let's see where is chassis fan 1. And I'll be right back. Alright, All right, we're back and uh, we're going to finish up the last part of the wiring that's necessary for the computer. So what I have is I have the front fan connector which is a 3 pin. And we left off last time we were looking for chassis fan 1. I have chassis fan 2 and I have chassis fan 3 right here underneath the processor. And for chassis fan 1... Chassis fan 1 is on the bottom of the board on this one, which is interesting. So I'm going to go back behind the wires here. And it is all the way down at the bottom of this motherboard. Okay, so that's the chassis, that's the front fan. And for the second fan, I'm just gonna pull the wire just a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it tied. And I'm gonna put it on chassis fan two and hook these up. And that's it for the wiring of the computer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit because it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, some cases are really easy to make really clean, some not so much. Let's see what we can do. I got these uh, little bitty zip ties that came with the case. So I wanna take I'm not so worried about the ones in the bottom, there's no airflow down here because there's no front fan, so I'm not really going to stress the little bundle here. What I am going to worry about is making sure that I keep these upper wires here out of my way so the fan from here can uh, give plenty of airflow. And I'm going to think that um, this one little zip tie is not going to cut what I need. So Jump it. Yeah. I make these two. I want to want two. Um, wire. Yeah. Wire works good. So I'm just gonna take this uh, this tie wire right here. I'm gonna grab all these wires, and I'm going to try to get this wired up, mostly out of my way. 
I'll probably end up painting this up a little better later, but for now I just need to make sure that the system is wired up and that it works right. Um, oh, and for the audio cable, we missed one wire. Sorry, guys. All right, so on the sound card, on the bottom of the sound card in the back, there's a set of pins that I should have showed earlier and I didn't. So this works on both the motherboard and if you get a sound card, it works on the sound card too. It's the HD audio. But since we have a sound card, we do not want to plug this into the motherboard. We want to plug this into the sound card. Now there's a row of pins and there'll be one that's missing and you want to match it up with the one missing on the pins so that way everything works correctly. So. It goes on. Just like that. This computer is done being wired up. Yeah. I will clean the wiring up later but there's your basic idea on how to put a computer together. I'm going to work on... Uh, some of these other wires because they're not as pretty as I like. So thank you for watching. Here's your computer build. I hope this helps you guys out. Any comments or anything, let me know. If you have trouble, you need some help, leave a comment and tell me. Thank you.